Cardinals are catching the Mets at a good time. Uh, I'm sure the Mets are thinking, hey, we're catching the Cardinals. That's <laughs> that why I, li- I, I, I actually like this series a lot because these are like two of the just unimaginably bad teams that people did not expect at all to be this quite this bad. So it'll be Michaelis uh, tomorrow night um, against Tyler McGill, who's been pretty uh, – actually, ZRA's over five. You know, he was ac- outstanding, I think, last season – uh, early and then had a pretty serious injury. Anyway, Saturday at three ten, it'll be Wainwright against Senga, and Senga has been really good, three point three four ERA. And of course, the Cardinals have never seen Senga, who came over from Japan first year in the majors. They haven't seen him, so you kind of know how this one should go, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, well, wait a minute, I take that back. They have all these excellent coaches that get them totally prepared for pitchers they've never faced before. But yeah, pardon me. Oh, I don't <laughs> know. I, I I got a 15-strikeout <laughs> night coming on for a game like that. First time Senga, through, we didn't know. And Senga's pretty clever, too. He does a lot of stuff. I mean, he's, he'll be fun to watch. I haven't seen him much. Sunday, you got a 12:40 game St. Louis time. Early win. I like it. Libertor against Carlos Carrasco, who's not been very good. So we'll see. Can the Cardinals win a series? They have not won a series since they beat the Dodgers here, winning three out of four at Bush Stadium. That series ended May the 21st. That series also ended their 11-3 and streak, which is the only good baseball they have played all season. You know, if you look at it, um, um, if you look at it this way, let me do this real quick, and I apologize. If you take that 11 and 3 stretch, the one good stretch of baseball they've played this year, uh, the Cardinals are 16 and 39. You take those 14 games away, they're 16 and 39. I mean, it's worse. Oh, my gosh. Right? So I I, I teased before we had Mark Simon on, I teased to this because it cracked me up. And I I think all you got to, seriously, the only thing you can do is laugh. So when Katie Wu interviewed Nolan Arenado, and she, she actually interviewed her, like this wasn't part of a, like a media pack. She, she talked to him before a game. It was just a one-on-one type interview. Mm-hmm. And listen, Arenado's trying to do the right thing. And then Arenado points fingers at himself and specifically acknowledges, okay, I've been bad here. I've been, I'm not good here. You know, and I, I, I see that kind of stuff I respect. But he's being a team good. He's being a team guy, good team guy. So he's also defending Marmol and and the coaches, but especially Marmol. And then he said this, and then I thought this was really interesting. He told Katie Wu yesterday before the game, "I think Ollie's been dealt a tough hand the last two years. I really do believe that." And I'm like, "Hmm, that's interesting." Because then, Arenado then followed by explaining, hey, you know, we, we had a young team last year. We have a young team this year. And I called a timeout on my own, just sitting here in my office. I said, well, hold on now. <laughs> the, the young players uh, were not a problem last season, and they are not a problem this season. You know, if you think of the contributions the Cardinals got from, you know, Donovan, Newt Barr, uh, when they really, they really kicked in um, – in the second half of the season. I mean, they, they had a lot of young guys doing good things. They have a lot of young guys doing good things this season, even though Arenado, excuse me, even though Gorman's in kind of a, he's in a bad funk, and I hope that uh, he gets out of that soon because the numbers are horrendous. But the dude still has put up, uh, what what is it, 16, 17 home, 17 home runs, dri- got a slugging percentage over five, he's driven in a lot of runs. He, he, Brennan Donovan getting on base all the time. When Newt Barr um, has been playing, his on-base percentage is great. Uh, you can move Donovan around, and he does a, does a good job, a solid job at just about every defensive position. Like, look, man, you can't blame – you can't attribute their youth to any of this. You look around Major League Baseball. In fact, the Cardinals just got beat by the Reds, who have all these really good young players. Young players are thriving all across Major League Baseball. Look at those surprising Arizona Diamondbacks and look at all the young players they have who are just getting it done. Um, You can win at a high level with young players. So with all due respect to Arenado, come on. 
just get that out of the way because it's not it's really not an accurate read. Yes, Jordan Walker cannot play defense. We get it. Other than that, I don't have any problem with any young player they do. Yo, okay, people are like, well, what about Alec Burleson? You know what? That's the manager playing him so much. He'll be a good hitter. He's not there yet. But I just don't, I think he overstated the young player factor. That's all I'm trying to say. All right. The thing that jumped out at me was when Arenado said, I'm going to repeat, I think Ali has been dealt a tough hand. And the first thing I thought was, you know, I – that's a little bit of a jab at the front office, ain't it? Yes. Because when he's been dealt a tough hand, you're talking about the other way to say it. Um, you know, he he can only do so much with the talent that he has, or um, he's been dealt a tough hand, as in, you know, doesn't have enough winning cards or whatever whatever point he's trying to make. But he's pointing to the roster, in my opinion. Um. And I think that that suggestion, that implied criticism is accurate because John Mazalak and his aides have gone into the last two seasons at least with holes in the roster. And um, you can even say 2021, holes in the roster in 21, 22, 23. They've had an obvious need to add to their starting pitching for quite a while. They ignore it. They're complacent. They're arrogant. And it's a definite factor in the team's demise. So, yeah. Uh, the roster construction, the roster holes, the roster flaws absolutely have been a definite factor in this team's decline and demise this year. There's no getting around that. It's indefensible. Uh, that also applies to the bench. Um, it, and then the, they signed one player, as we know, and that's Contreras. And uh, Man, I ain't giving up on him, but the fact is he's hit 198. And he's had uh, power, not all that much power. So... You know what's funny about this? I had to set it up. You know what's funny about this? The whole, uh, he's been dealt the tough hand, right? Yeah. When Katie Wu interviewed Mosellac when the team was in Texas, can I read a quote to you? Yes, please. When he, def- when he defended Mar- Marmol? Quote, unfortunately, he wasn't dealt the hand he thought he was going to get. <laughs> Wait, a, huh? So he's repeating what Arenado said, and if I'm not mistaken, Jim, please tell me. I get wound up, and sometimes late in the show, you know, I might lose my place or whatever because I'm all steamed up and I'm talking too fast. Um, if we're talking about who supplies the cards, no pun intended, and is it isn't Mo responsible for making sure he's doing everything that he can to give the manager a stronger roster and a better set of cards to play with? Mosellek supplies the the whole deck of cards before each season, correct? Oh, yes, he does. He will let you know that, too. So what is he talking about? It's one thing for Arenado to say it, the same exact thing virtually, but then you have Mo saying... Unfortunately, he wasn't dealt the hand that he thought he was going to get. Well, who who dealt him the hand? That would be you. <laughs> Who's the unbelievable dealer here, John? Call us that. My, my God, so um, that just tells you it, 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 it's – they're so comical. It, it, this stuff is just so comical. You know, the, 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 the decline and the demise of the Cardinals is not some accidental thing. Um, instead of taking accountability, which he never does, you remember when the Cardinals starting pitching was at their worst this season early on, which really hurt him. You know, Mo told my good friend Tom Ackerman on KMOX that, well, I, don't, I really don't see, I, I don't really don't believe that starting pitching is the reason we're not winning. And I... I'm like, no, there's just no way he said that. And I went back and listened to it to make sure I'm serious. I had to go back and listen to it. And he absolutely said that. So the Cardinals could have a starting pitching ERA of like 12-18 or something, and he'd be, well, I mean, I respect everyone's opinion, but I really don't see it as a problem. (laughs) And he's talking about how the manager's been dealt the tough, tough, uh, tough hand of cards. Of course he is. Well, who who did it? Who did that? I, I mean, 
This is just, oh, my goodness. Texter says it's not a young player problem. It's a Matt's O'Neill, Carlson, Contreras, Flaherty veteran problem not coming mm, through. Ain't, you know, isn't that the truth? <laughs> yeah, it is. And some others we could name. Oh, know? yeah, there's others uh, on the I don't, list. I don't think Matthew Libertor is a problem. When Once they actually said, uh, you know, uh, we think he'd, we're better off with him in the rotation than Matt's. And I, I ain't saying Libertor is uh, oh, man, he is wonderful. No, it, it, he's a young guy. He's still getting major league experience. He's had a couple, one bad start, one that was could have been better but wasn't awful, and he he's actually pitched well a couple times. You know, he, you see, you can live with that when it's a young player who oh, yeah. st- still is better than Steven Matz. You, you can live with hiccups, you know? Um. So I don't, I don't, I just don't know. See, there's no, this is point, this, this points out the problem. There's no accountability. And as much as I get it, tip of the cap to Arenado and Wainwright and Goldschmidt yesterday for saying the stuff that they did, it still doesn't erase the reality of there's a reason why you have managers and coaches. And they exist for very specific reasons. Um, and if they were doing a better job, the Cardinals would not be at the bottom of the National League and the bottom of Major League Baseball with defensive run save, which is a huge collapse from where they were the previous two seasons, when they were near the top of Major League Baseball. Uh, these these guys are athletes. They've made the Major Leagues. That tell, tells us they have the talent, right? But if those players or one area of your team has just really deteriorated to the point of being alarming, I'll, I'll ask again what I asked earlier in the show. What exactly is the point of having all these coaches and the manager who's supposed to be knowledgeable about all this stuff and who really did do a good job setting his defense last season and the base running? Why, did the ba- why has the base running deteriorated? A lot. Why has the defense fallen apart a lot? What are they doing? Isn't it their responsibility to make it better, to improve it as much as they possibly can? What What is going on? That's why I just, uh, I, you know, for people that you know, have just joined us recently in the show, that's why I just can't sit there and just say, oh, yeah, see, they're right. Oh, they support the coaches. They, oh, they support Ali. Okay, well, well, okay, we won't talk about that anymore. They're, it's all good. It's actually see, there's there are people that frankly aren't bright enough to actually get the real point, which is if these coaches and the manager are as great as the players say they are, then why are they? Why is this team getting worse and worse and worse and worse? Why is the defense getting worse and worse and worse and worse? It used to be a tremendous strength. Now it's down there with it's slumming with the A's and the Royals. That's how bad it is. Why is the base running so poor, even though the rules were set up to give you a better chance to do more on the bases? The manager and the coaches don't have anything to do with that, really? See, so when when you're like, well, the players, especially media people, you say, well, the players and the three most respected guys in the clubhouse, they stand by Marmol and the coaches. Well, good. Uh, you might want to ask a question or two about how, with all this commitment and all this hard work and all this caring preparation, all the good vibes, uh, all this great instruction that the coaches provide, why are they six and fifteen in the last uh, since they had their one hot streak? Why, why are they losing five out of six at home? Why do they get their ass kicked by the Pirates and the Reds now? You know, it is unexplainable. We got another text that comes in and says Bernie Palante, Verhage, and Cabrera are all regressing. Who is coaching them up? Duke. <laughs> the Duke is. And I ain't talking about John Wayne for all you old schoolers. No. (laughs) 
right? Yeah. Oh, they might need him out of there in that bullpen to teach them a few things. The real Duke. It's bad. It is really bad. Um, but, I, hey, man, you know, I, I, you know, I like having the opportunity to kind of just debunk all this crap, you know? It, it's it, more of the same, but it, and there's so many holes. It's like you think they could concentrate on a couple things and get them straight out, especially the defensive side of things. You know, we talked earlier, and I just mentioned there's four guys that won gold gloves that are playing on this team every day. Mm-hmm. How the heck can you not at least fix a couple, a little bit of that and shore that up? I don't know. I, no, you're right. Um, and, you know, you, you know, when I was talking to Mark Simon, we were talking about this. So one thing Ali likes to use, uh, he's starting to do it more and more, and he's subtle about it. He's not, like, going nuts over it, but he sneaks in the references all the time. Well, on the rare occasion that the people in the media actually ask him about why is, why is, what's wrong with your defense, um, you know, he in recent weeks, it, it, a lot of it, you know, he's trying to peg it all to injuries. Which, first of all, uh, you know, Tyler O'Neill's been a non-factor all season, so he doesn't count if you mention him. His defense wasn't good anyway when he was playing. It wasn't. He was a minus two or three in left field. Uh, Carlson's overrated defensively. People have, you know, have have turned him into Tory Hunter around here or something. It's like, give me a break. He's good. He's fine, but he's a minus fielder, in, even in center, defensive run safe. And Walker is a rookie, and the organization failed him by not giving him outfield experience last season in double A until the final month of the season, which is not enough time at all. So I feel bad for the kid because, once again, the organization failed uh, failed him. He he hasn't failed the organization as far as his fielding, um, but he's trying to he's trying to pawn it all off on the outfield and he's and the injuries, and that's a factor, but it's not an excuse. And one of the reasons at a time he said he was saying this last week, even well, we got infielders playing outfield. <laughs> well, whose fault is that? Tommy Edmond is actually your best center fielder. So what? Are are you not bright enough to understand you can't use that as an excuse when a guy that you move to center field is playing the best center field we've seen in quite a long time? Yet he's citing, well, we got infielders playing the outfield. We got Tommy out there. He's never played center. He's better than anybody you have out there. That's that's terrible, but it's true. And Donovan, look, I think he's a minus this or that. It's it's very minimal when he plays the outfield. You can't pawn this off on, well, we got infielders playing the outfield. Yeah. Edmund is terrific in center field, and Donovan does a commendable job. He's not some big liability. So what other infielders are playing the outfield? It's only two. And you're going to keep bringing out that excuse? It's just, see, the weakness is what bothers me. Uh the refusal and Marmol and see, we wonder why they're so tight. This is one of the things. Neither one of them will be honest, realistic about problems that don't get solved or problems that set in at the beginning when you don't put a good roster together. They both refuse to acknowledge the obvious. In fact, they will push back against the obvious and then they will use excuses to justify their failures. Marmol. Well, we're playing infielders in the outfield, so I don't know. You know, I don't know what you expect. Well, I think you found a center fielder who's better than anybody you have on the forty-man roster. Okay, I think that's one thing you say. Uh, Mo, you know, well, you know, in June, in June, well, you know, the WBC, well, the pitch clock. Never acknowledging <laughs> once that, yeah. yeah, never acknowledging once that he screwed up for the third year in a row by not offering or not upgrading the rotation before the season. It's and and these people want to stand there with a straight face and talk about oh, there's hey, uh, we hold this guy accountable, we hold the players accountable, hey, accountable, 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 accountable. Oh, if every, all the everyone from top to bottom is being held accountable for a team that has the worst record 
by a Cardinals team through 69 games since 1978. A Cardinals team that has not been 15 games under 500 since the 1997 Cardinals uh, were uh, were about 17, 18 games below 500 in the final week of the season. Everything's great as far as uh, the, the lock of the clubhouse, the, the instruction, the teaching. We hold them accountable. I repeat, how come the team isn't improving then? Why is it getting worse if all these all this good work's being done? Yeah, a, a part of it obviously is on the players. The big reason is is the front office because they never give they, – they, they always overrate their own talent. Uh, they overrate their own prospects, and they also uh, keep making little wishes. You know, oh, this is the year, Tyler O'Neill. Oh, he, you know, he stretched all winter. <laughs> they keep falling for that. Every day, all winter, he stretched. They keep giving away players to other organizations. I'm, I mean, anyway. The text comes in and says, Tommy can go get it, but his arm is a second baseman's arm. Um. Yeah, I think that's. I think that could be true. I have to look into that more. Uh, but yeah, I mean that actually seems. I would probably tend to agree with that. Fair to me, but but I also. I, I would say respectfully that. Um, their main problem it's been glaring is actually having outfielders who can go get the ball. Is, yeah. So, I'm not going to minimize that. There's no reason to.